in the 19th century, more than 50% of Kerala's population was matrilineal. It wasn't just the Nayas. Um, so you have Muslim matrilineal, you have Tia matrilineal, even some Christians of central Kerala were matrilineal. What you see in the late 18th and early 19th century is many women setting up their own households. The lineage would follow in her line. I mean, that's the thing about matrilineal, right? You have female-centered households. So it's the natal family that matters, a woman and her sisters and their children. Of course, a certain mobility was possible for women of a certain caste hierarchy and with land power and so on. Uh, a recognition that they, you know, once they set up their households wherever they went to, that they needed to be recognized as such. And because I was studying Malabar, the story is a very specific kind because Malabar is that part of Kerala that got colonized by the British. And their worldview was that the head of the household was a man. Now, if you were matrilineal, then the head of the household would be an uncle, right? Uh, a mother's brother. I mean, the idea of her mother being the head of that household was quite unthinkable to them. So you have, by the mid-19th century, legal judgments that say that the garnavan or the eldest male member of the household is the head of the household and everybody else is dependent on the garnavan. And by the early 20th century, a bunch of different things are happening. You're talking about a time when particularly young men were being sent off to study and so on. And they were going off to Madras and other places. And they were coming back with this kind of slightly embarrassed kind of feeling about matrilineal and saying, you know, where are our fathers and we don't know them. And, you know, do we want this form? And, you know, this is not respectable. I mean, the kind of moral anxieties that you begin to find amongst this kind of um, educated young men, you didn't see that elsewhere. Right? And so it becomes a world in which people are going to court. They're also anxious about the fact that, you know, they may be living this kind of licentious and immoral lives and, you know, licentiousness and immorality is always tied to, and we know this only too well, around women's sexuality. Right? So how do we reorder families in order to keep our women chaste? So it was cleansing the Nayas into becoming this kind of, you know, moral upper caste Hindus. In 1976, the Kerala legislature actually abolishes matrilineal. Now, this is the only place in the world where a kinship practice is actually abolished by law. The critical thing is redefining the boundaries of a Hindu family.